Hey y'all, it's Miss Siddiqui here. You've probably been reading and analyzing poetry throughout your schooling. In this video, I'm going to talk about a specific poem analysis method called TPCAST-T. TPCAST-T is an acronym, which stands for Title, Paraphrase, Connotation, Attitude and Tone, Shift, Title Revisited, and Theme. In this video, I will walk you through the different letters in the acronym for the poem analysis method and do an example analysis on the poem Dreams by Langston Hughes, which I think you should be familiar with at this point in your career. So I picked a shorter poem for the purpose of uh, this video. So let's get started. Dreams by Langston Hughes. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken-winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, life is a barren field frozen with snow. This poem, Dreams, has become infamous in the literary world, I think because of its universal message that resonates with readers. So, I'm going to talk to you about how to analyze this poem and arrive at that theme using TPCAST-T. So, the first T in TPCAST-T is title. When you read the title, make a prediction based on the title of the poem of what you think it might be about. This kind of speculation allows you to um, better prepare to read and interpret the poem. So, when you're looking at a poem, annotate and jot a prediction down for the title. So, for the poem Dreams, I might write down, this poem will be about dreams. But, I'll extend that to say, it will probably be about dreams as goals, but it could also be about dreams people have while asleep. Then, paraphrase the poem. Remember, poetry takes time. It's not meant to be read and understood as quickly as it takes to read, actually physically read the poem. So, take some time to paraphrase what you are reading. Don't overlook literal meanings and jump to analysis. Rewrite the poem in your own words. Your paraphrasing should have the same line numbers. Remember, paraphrasing is different than summarizing. You should do it line by line to really dissect what is this poem trying to communicate. So, for example, if I were to paraphrase dreams, I might say, instead of hold fast to dreams, hold on tightly to dreams. For if dreams die, because if dreams die, life is a broken-winged bird. Life is like an injured bird that cannot fly. And that doesn't necessarily need paraphrasing, so I could leave it as is. Then, hold fast to dreams, in plain language would be hold on tightly to dreams. For when dreams go, because when dreams are lost, Life is a barren field. Life is like a field with nothing in it, frozen with snow. That is, frozen with snow. So breaking it up into simple, plainer language, line by line, might help me to see things that I might not see originally. Then, look for connotation. What this means is to look at the poetic devices that contribute to the meaning of the poem. So that includes the type of things that you um, look for in actual short stories and literature and fiction, like figurative language and diction and point of view. But also in poetry, you're going to be looking at rhyme and structure. So, for example, in this poem, some Personification is dreams die, dreams go. Personifying dreams makes the dream seem important. Dreams dying makes it seem like a dream is lost forever. Some metaphor and imagery, life is a broken winged bird, life is a barren field. Both of these metaphors have a negative connotation. Losing a dream can have drastically negative results on life. That's what the, these metaphors and these, this imagery tells me. The point of view of the poem is in second person, so that means that the speaker is talking directly to the reader. There are end rhymes such as die, fly, and go, and snow, which add 
to the aesthetic sound quality of the poem. There's this repetition of hold fast to dreams, so I can see that as an important idea throughout the poem. And then there is alliteration, dreams die. These sound devices give the poem a dreamy and melancholy sound and mood and contribute to how the, I am supposed to feel reading the poem and trying to interpret the message. The next thing I want to look at is attitude. So, attitude means explore the speaker's attitude towards the subject, figure out what the tone of the poem is, and determine how that impacts the mood of the reader. Remember, tone and mood are interrelated. So, tone is the author, mood is how the reader feels. So that's the A in TP Cast D. So applying that to the poem Dreams, the speaker could be male or female, but he or she sounds wise, he or she is probably an adult, someone who has seen and witnessed the negative effects of lost dreams. It doesn't sound like a hopeful, naive youth. It sounds like a person with wisdom and some perspective. So the audience, the target audience, is general because everybody has and needs dreams. So the speaker is speaking to all humans. Um, and then the tone is sort of cautionary, like talking directly to the reader, sort of um, sad and saying, reminding us that, you know, hold fast to dreams. So looking at the attitude can help me get at the message of the poem. So most poems include a shift. Um, in Italian, this is called the volta, which is a change in the poem. So the shift is a dramatic transformation of the speaker's point of view. It also can be an epiphany that the speaker is having as they relay the experience of the poem. So some key words to look for with the shift are like but and yet and however and although. Shifts are also indicated by dashes or periods or colons and ellipses. Their stanza division sometimes signify the shift. Um, any moments of irony in the poem or changes in tone or attitude of the speaker. So there are many different ways that authors portray this dramatic uh, transformation in poetry. So you have to be on the lookout for different types of shifts. And then also consider what the shift might um, indicate about what the ultimate message of the poem is. In the poem Dreams, the shift occurs with the last two lines, where the poem ends abruptly with strong imagery of a barren and frozen life. This shift emphasizes Hugh's point that life is meaningless without dreaming with hyperbolic and figurative language. And that's how we were able to identify the shift in this poem. Finally, the last step of this poem analysis method is revisiting the title. So that means look at the title again, this time look at it as an, at an interpretive level and not at a prediction level, and ask yourself, what new insights does the title provide? So in Dreams, the title is very indicative of what the poem's going to be about, but as we get to the end, we see that maybe Hughes is naming this poem Dreams um, to continue to represent that dreams, that continuing to dream and and holding on to dreams is of incredible importance to the author and is a big part of their message in this poem. Then finally, the last step is theme. What is the poem saying about the human experience or condition? What subjects does the poem address? What did you or the author learn? What is the author's message? Remember, theme, you should be able to articulate in a complete sentence of what the message is. What's its social commentary? Um, what is it trying to say? So themes aren't just one word. So a possible theme statement for this poem um, is that a life without dreams is empty. So that brings us to the end of the TPCAST T analysis method. So make sure you try to remember the acronym to help you annotate and analyze poetry in the future. Thanks for watching.